Have you heard of Big Mama Thornton? Willie Mae, Big Mama Thornton, was a blues singer and songwriter whose recordings of Hound Dog and Ball and Chain later were transformed into huge hits by Elvis Presley and Janis Joplin. Willie Mae Thornton was born on December 11, 1926, outside of Montgomery in rural Alabama. Her father was a Baptist minister and her mother was a church singer in his congregation. Thornton's mother died when the singer was 14 and she left home to pursue a career as an entertainer. She joined the Georgia-based Hot Harlem Review as an accomplished singer, drummer, and harmonica player. One of Thornton's earliest and most popular recorded tracks was Hound Dog. Thornton's version of Hound Dog topped the R&B charts for seven weeks and sold over two million copies nationwide. Though the song brought acclaim to Thornton, it only yielded her about $500. Though Thornton's popularity continued to surge throughout the 1970s, her health deteriorated due to years of heavy drinking. Thornton recovered from an automobile accident in the early 1980s to perform at the 1983 Newport Jazz Festival. Big Mama Thornton died in Los Angeles on July 25, 1984, at the age of 57 from complications resulting from a heart attack. Let's talk about Memphis Minnie. Born Lizzie Douglas on June 3, 1897 in Louisiana, Memphis Minnie was one of the most influential blues artists in the United States. She released more than 180 songs. Unlike most female blues singers of the time, Minnie also wrote her own songs and played guitar. At age 8, she received her first guitar for Christmas. She learned to play both the guitar and the banjo and performed under the name Kid Douglas. In 1910, at the age of 13, she ran away from home to live on Beale Street in Memphis and eventually toured with the Ringling Brothers Circus. She later returned to Bill Street, which was one of the first places in the country where women could perform in public. In order to survive financially, most female performers on Bill Street were also prostitutes, and Minnie was no exception. She married guitarist Kansas Joe McCoy in 1929. It was during their New York recording sessions that she changed her name to Memphis Minnie. As her health began to fail, she retired from her music career. Minnie passed away in Memphis on August 6, 1973, at the age of 86. Have you heard of Madalena Castellana? Born in the mid-1500s, established composer, professional singer, lutenist, and teacher, Madalena Castellana of Venice was the first woman to publish her own musical compositions, primarily madrigals. Women's roles in the 1500s largely centered around domestic duties and a constrained societal existence with the expectation that they would live humble, demure, and pious lives. Musical women in earlier times had often been silenced, but the 16th century brought the beginning of a much debated change. Young women, including Castellana, were offered the opportunity to pursue academic studies in Florence. Researcher Thomason LeMay writes, She was an independent woman who apparently came from modest means and chose to earn her own living. We know that women should not have been able to do that then, for they were property of either their father, brother, or husband. At the very least, we know that Madalena was highly unusual in her quest for a self-identifying voice and that she must have experienced life quite differently, not only from other women, but also from other women performers. Let's talk about Viola Smith. Viola Clara Schmitz was born in Mount Calvary, Wisconsin on November 29, 1912. She lived to be 107 and was referred to as the female Jean Krupa and the fastest girl drummer in the world. Smith was known for her signature 13-piece drum set, particularly two 16-inch toms at shoulder height. She grew up with seven sisters and two brothers. All learned piano first, but only the girls were to be in an all-girl orchestra known as the Schmitz Sisters Family Orchestra, conceived by their father. She chose to drum because the other instruments she liked were already played by her older siblings. In 1938, Viola formed her own all-female orchestra with her sister Mildred, which existed until 1942. They were called the Coquettes. Smith studied the timpani at Juilliard and played for the NBC Orchestra. She was on the Ed Sullivan Show five times and was part of the Kit Kat Band and the Broadway Musical Cabaret. Smith also shared the stage with Ella Fitzgerald, Chick Webb, and performed at President Truman's second inauguration. She was still playing with local bands up until her death in 2020. Let's talk about Annette Aguilar. Annette A. Aguilar, multi-percussionist, recording artist, producer, and band leader, was born in San Francisco into a family from Nicaragua. She began playing music at the age of 11. By the age of 16, she was sitting in and performing with renowned Latin artists such as Santana and Sheila E. She has worked on Grammy award-winning Broadway shows and symphony orchestras and is the principal timpanist for the Bronx Symphony. She has toured and shared the stage with such acts as Darlene Love, The Four Tops, Stevie Wonder, Tito Puente, and The Grateful Dead, and many more. In 1992, she formed her Latin and Brazilian jazz group, Annette A. Aguilar and String Beans. They have been selected three times as Latin jazz ambassadors by the U.S. State Department as part of its Rhythm Road Cultural Exchange Program. In addition to performing, she teaches percussion at the Third Street Music School Settlement in New York. In 2014, she organized the first annual Women in Latin Jazz Festival in Upper Manhattan. You may remember her as the character Bonnie on the sitcom Roseanne, but did you see the episode where she sang?
Bonnie Bramlett, born Bonnie O'Farrell, November 8, 1944, in Illinois, is a singer known for performing with her husband, Delaney Bramlett, as Delaney and Bonnie. Bonnie started her musical career at the age of 15, singing around St. Louis. She performed as a backup singer for blues musicians such as Albert King and Little Milton. At the age of 17, she was briefly an Iket with Ike and Tina Turner. In 1967, she met musician Delaney Bramlett, performing at the opening of a bowling alley with the Shin Dogs, the house band for the television show Shindig. They were married a week later. They soon toured with Eric Clapton with frequent drop-in performances from Dwayne Allman, George Harrison, and Dave Mason. The group became known as Delaney and Bonnie and Friends. She also co-wrote the song Superstar, popularized by the Carpenters, and the classic Let It Rain, recorded by Eric Clapton. She currently lives in Nashville, where she continues to create music and write songs. Let's talk about Uta Hip. Uta Hip, born February 4, 1925, in Leipzig during the Weimar Republic, was a jazz pianist and composer. As a young adult, she studied at the Leipzig Academy of Graphic Arts in East Germany. Hip initially listened to jazz in secret, as it was not approved of by the Nazi authorities. After World War II, she became a refugee, often lacking food and other necessities. By the early 1950s, she was a touring pianist and soon led her own bands. Critic Leonard Feather heard Hip perform in Germany in 1954, recorded her, and organized her move to the United States the following year. Club and festival appearances soon followed, as did album releases. She's best known for her albums Uta Hip at the Hickory House, Volume 1 and 2, released on Blue Note, as well as her albums with Zoot Sims, also recorded on Blue Note. Hip's last recording was in 1956. She started working in a clothing factory and ultimately cut herself off from the music world. She remained in the United States and worked for the clothing company for 35 years. She died April 7, 2003, of unknown causes at her home in Queens, New York. She was 78. Let's talk about Ronnie Stoneman. Veronica Loretta Ronnie Stoneman was born May 5, 1938 in Washington, D.C. She was a comedian and cast member on the country music show Hee Haw, holding her own with well-known banjo pickers such as Roy Clark, Buck Trent, Grandpa Jones, and Stringbean. She was the first woman recorded playing bluegrass banjo, and her talents have earned her the name the First Lady of Banjo. Her father, Ernest Pop Stoneman, was one of the first ever country musicians to make a career of recording country music. His hit 1924 song, The Sinking of the Titanic, became the first ever million-selling country music record. As a youngster, Ronnie played banjo in the family band The Stonemans. They were a very popular touring act, performing at the White House, the Smithsonian, and in 1962 on the Grand Ole Opry. Ronnie was asked to join the Hee Haw cast after she made a guest appearance in 1972. Ronnie and her sister Donna are the last two surviving members of the Stoneman family band. Let's talk about Dolly Jones. Dolly Jones, born in Chicago, Illinois, on November 27, 1902, was a jazz trumpet and trombone player. She was the first female jazz trumpeter to be recorded. Her mother, Daya Jones, was a pre-Armstrong jazz trumpeter who also taught Valeta Snow. Her father played saxophone. With her mother and father, she was part of the Jones family band, which worked with Josephine Baker in 1919. Female instrumentalists of the time, more often than not, formed all-women bands or played in family groups. In the early 1920s, she formed a trio, the Three Classy Misses, in Kansas City. Jones then toured as a trombonist with Ma Rainey and played coronet for Al Wynn. She also toured with others such as Ida Cox in 1928 and Lil Hardin Armstrong's Harlem Harlequins in the early 1930s. She played trumpeter Miss Watkins, a little girl from Birmingham, in Oscar Micheaux's 1936 musical film Swing. She continued to play into the 1970s with Eddie Bearfield. She died August 1975 in New York City at the age of 72. Have you heard of Sister Rosetta Tharp? Sister Rosetta Tharp, born Rosetta Newbin March 20, 1915, in Arkansas, was an American singer, songwriter, and guitarist. She first gained popularity in the 1930s and 1940s with her gospel recordings, characterized by a unique mixture of spiritual lyrics and electric guitar. She was the first great recording star of gospel music and was among the first gospel musicians to appeal to rhythm and blues and rock and roll audiences, later being referred to as the original soul sister and the godmother of rock and roll. Tharp was a pioneer in her guitar technique and was among the first popular recording artists to use heavy distortion on her electric guitar. Willing to cross the line between sacred and secular, Tharp pushed spiritual music into the mainstream and helped pioneer the rise of pop gospel beginning in 1938. While she offended some conservative churchgoers with her forays into the pop world, she never left gospel music. In May 2018, Tharp was posthumously included in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Tharp's performances were curtailed by a stroke. On October 9, 1973, she died as a result of another stroke in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania.